Hello, this is Greg Allison, Green Gregs. Coming to you on the first day of April 2021, time on deck is 21, 3100 hours, Central Daylight Time. Is Russia about to invade Ukraine? Is Russia up to for an imminent invasion of the Ukraine nation? Well, my friends, it looks like it. It looks like they're at least set for it. Will it happen? Well, we're going to talk about that. War drums are pounding. On the pavement, the boots are pounding. My friends, uh, we live in dangerous, uncertain times. This is just one more firecracker thrown into the fireplace, uh, which could get really ugly really fast. Uh, I've been telling you, I've been telling you all along that the, the tensions internationally are just huge and the tensions domestically are huge. And, and in fact, American tensions are so huge. Uh, I've seen an Indian video just recently uh, suggesting that we're no longer a superpower. <laughs> Well, we may go into that in the future, but you know, I'm sure you would argue with that. But my friends, it's definitely off the charts. We we are in perilous times, and that's why I come to you with videos like this so you can have your eyes wide open and head on a swivel. Because my friends, my swivel head friends who follow this channel, I'm here to help you survive, thrive, and stay out of the hive. That's the proposition of this channel. And on that tune, I bring you videos about these things going on in the world, but I also bring videos about how to garden how to raise worms, how to eat free from the weeds and the trees, uh, especially if you're out in the woods. Now, you may not get quite enough calories that way, but there's a way to supplant that, uh, which I also cover. Now, I highly suggest you share my videos with as many people as you can. If you've not subscribed to my channel yet, subscribe, bang the notification bell and click all. That way you will get notifications, hopefully to my videos. Sometimes that still may be a little bit perplexing, <laughs> but that is the way that YouTube works to get the notifications. It's bang the up that notification bell and click all, and that's what's important. Now, uh, and I also bring a lot of specials to you to, to help you better prepare. Like for example, I've got this special with uh, fifty dollars off actually for uh, about twenty percent for a two week supply is one bucket or a four week supply two buckets of this twenty five year lasting food. This comes to us from my Patreon spot. To find it, to get this, the special discounts, go to prepwithgreg.com, prepwithgreg.com. And this is real food, breakfast, lunch, and dinner, uh, 2,000 calories a day. It'll make you a winner. And it's a uh, lightweight because it is free stride. You just add water. If you don't know how to get uh, water, it's clean. Look at my video on how to purify and sanitize water. You can see it pretty early in my survival uh, playlist. Yeah, you get these nice little pouches in here. Put them in your backpack, throw this in your bus, your, your van, your car, your motorcycle, your boat, <laughs> or bury them in a cache point. You know, put a cache out in the woods and bury these things. Now, that pouch was four servings. Take that's just two servings, big old hard can. All right, there you go. And also, if you go to prepwithgreg.com, uh, there's a big My Patriot Supply logo. Click on that, and that will take you into all other kind of prepping supplies. That, things that you'll need in these perilous times ahead. And uh, gosh, if you haven't seen the idea that you need to be prepping, <laughs> you need to open them eyes, get them wide open, put that head on the swivel because it's coming at us from all directions. Okay, so what is happening right now? What's happened is that Russia and Belarus are both putting troops on the border with Ukraine. So this is a three nation thing going on. And as you may be aware, the Ukrainians, uh, the Ukrainian army and military is right now engaged in fighting with uh, pro-Russian separatists in the Donbass region of, uh, of uh, Ukraine. And they call themselves the uh, Donetsk, the, the Donetsk uh, People's Republic. <laughs> That's what the separatists call themselves. As you may know, Eastern Ukraine is heavily uh, ethnically Russian. Now, uh, I don't know if that's because Russians went in and replaced those people, or if that's just, uh, you know, Russia did have a program of moving people around in countries to try to mix everything up to make everybody pretty much Russia or so, so there wouldn't be any, uh, you know, too much uh, pull to, for countries to get out of uh, the Warsaw Pact back in the Cold War days, or so that Russia would have dominance over a lot of countries. Now, that may not have totally panned out 
And again, this could have just been osmosis of peoples or just how they wind up. I don't know how it is that Eastern Ukraine is pre uh, predominantly ethnically Russian, but that's the way it is. Um, how much predominance it is, that's maybe questionable. Uh, Crimea though is like 99, over 99% ethnically Russian. So we're gonna go into all this, but then we're gonna talk about the many whys to this. Uh, amongst uh why would russia be doing this well one that they're claiming that they're going in to support their people who are being attacked by the ukraine and, uh, you know, they're blaming it on the ukrainian military uh on another hand um ukraine is a prize for europe and russia you know hitler wanted it and 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 so does putin because ukraine is a bread basket it's beautiful, rich agricultural land. The soil is dark and thick, kind of like up in the Northern Plains or the glaciers left behind. It is wonderful, wonderful, deep, rich black soil. Uh, <clears throat> so it grows and it grows very well. And Russia's uh, agriculture may be getting challenged in these times of uh, climatic change. Uh, you know, I've, I've, I've talked to you about, you know, Grand Solar Mental, if it gets colder, it's gonna be rough up there, but while they, whatever, uh, paradigm of climatic change you want to believe in. The fact of the matter is that the climate is getting more unstable. The jet stream, maybe due to their magnetic field getting weaker, is getting more uh, serendipitous. You know, kind of like a snake, a snake around more, which means you're getting more lows, uh, colds uh, that cause late freezing, late season frost you know, or early season uh, freezing that shortens growing uh, seasons, destroys crops. So uh, it's getting harder to grow farther north, like in Russia. So Ukraine looks very attractive. It's also attractive from the standpoint of uh, logistics and gas supply lines, and just a whole number of other things. Uh, as a matter of fact, the, the Russian, uh, Russia's always kind of felt like they owned Ukraine anyway. They've always felt like Ukraine was theirs more than a lot of other places. And so they, they uh, Putin has a great dream of unifying, reunifying Ukraine, I guess the whole thing. As you know, uh, there was a lot of this, uh, the recent uh, the conflict that was going on back during the Obama administration was, uh, had to do with the elections, actually. There was a pro-Russian president elected by Ukraine, and we are, some of our boys, CIA, whoever toppled him and installed somebody else. It was kind of a coup, and uh, that greatly upset Russia. Uh, because uh, th this new guy was not wanting to join NATO as we were trying to get Ukraine to go back in the day. And so Russia went in and, and <laughs> was supporting the separatists in those days too. And so with the, so the, we've had a previous conflict here. Um, <clears throat> so Ukraine is very much in the tension, uh, the tug of war between Russia and uh, Western Europe. And so there's a lot of things in play here, but one of the things in play is President Biden. President Biden and his administration basically told Russia, says, hey, we're not going to roll over to, to you anymore. Russia says, oh, yeah, <laughs> you don't look particularly strong to us, you know, and, and Biden is exactly uh, the resolute picture of strength and determination these days because, you know, he's got that little face. It looks like he's about to cry um, for the most part. So, uh, Biden doesn't exactly exude the image of great strength and determination, uh, resolute power. You know, he just it just doesn't exude from him, if you know what I mean. <laughs> In a tough guy world, you know, a bully wants to pick on somebody, just don't exude that, if you know what I mean. So there you go. Uh, let's go to some articles here. We'll show you some of this stuff. In fact, uh, much of what I've said has already been said in other places too. And, maybe different words in different ways. <laughs> so I'm gonna show you a whole list of articles on this. I might even play a little video, skip around toward the end here, some videos. All right, is Russia about to invade Ukraine? What's going on here is that um, there's huge units moving in, troops, armored personnel carrier, mobile artillery, artillery, uh, tanks uh the thing that's speaking uh, volumes to me is that uh, a lot of these vehicles are the heavy duty 
a lot of the cargo type vehicles and trucks of the heavy duty versions that would be used to transport large amounts of ammo. That says a lot and the fact that they're all going up on the border. So uh, we're going to go right down here. And let's see, a Russian TV channel, Russia Today, indicated Moscow is going to support the troops of the self-proclaimed uh, the next uh, People's Republic to come home. Does that mean they would annex them in Russia? Come home. The coming days could be a major watershed for the regional's military geopolitical situation. I mean, coming days. This is imminent, guys. The West has always assumed that Moscow was more than happy with the current situation, controlling not only Donbass region, I'm going to show some pictures of this, but also preventing Ukraine from joining NATO. Uh, to expect Putin to be uh, content with this domain, however, without having any option for a diplomatic resolution seemed overly optimistic <clears throat> from those powers. And here again, Russia's. Uh, uh, ultimate dream is to unify Russia and the Ukraine. Why? It's a breadbasket. Why? Climatic uh, changes are upon us. Uh, I'm back in on Grand Solar Minimum, you know, there's being the driving cause of that. Um, but take it as you will. And Moscow says he, that they, they, they've been uh, hamp hampered by this uh, Minsk Accords. Um, the Biden administration here. Uh, which is less flexible to Moscow strategies than the previous administration, it claims. Uh, here they are talking about that they're, they're not rolling over anymore. As I mentioned, Belarus is also involved in this. So there you go. That's part of it. I'm going to show a bunch more articles on this, but we're just going to skip around. I'm not reading everything. I'm picking on some of the highlights here to show you. Uh, yeah, the, the whole lot of what's at stake here is also oil and gas moving through Europe. So here is the Donbass area, Donetsk, that's, uh, uh, that's already occupied by pro-Russian uh, military or militias, whatever you want to call them, the uh, pro-Russian forces, it says here, <laughs> they are in this area right here. This is Crimea, which uh, Russia annexed back in, uh, uh, I believe it was about, uh, 2016, I think. So, oh, it says 2014. Okay, 2014 is when uh, Crimea was annexed by Russia. But they had an election, and over 99% voted to go with Russia. And uh, let me show you a little something about this. Uh, uh, we'll go to another map here. What a lot of people don't realize is this. Russia gave Crimea to the Ukraine in 1954. It was already Russian, but they thought, hey, we're all one big happy uh, pact here. It's close to you guys. Uh, it'd be easier for you to administrate it because it's right next to you. Also, one thing that they're fighting over is water. But Ukraine cut water off of Crimea after Russia annexed it. That's one of the things that uh, this is over. And Russia probably also wants to unite this region with their troops over here in Donetsk. So uh, anyway, this was the traditional Soviet Ukraine. Ukraine got this at the end of World War II uh, from Poland. This is areas that Ukraine has claimed at one time was these areas here. So you can see Ukraine has uh, been a, uh, a flexible moving target here as to what it's got at various times. So I'll close that map and we'll go in here and look at uh, where to look at that map. Yeah, you can see. Every region in Ukraine is called an oblast. You see that? The Donetsk Oblast. That's like what we call a state. There they call them oblast. Just to give you an idea, if you hear them talk about oblast, Donetsk is an oblast. Crimea was an oblast. All right. Uh, I thought it was something, something else. I guess it's a different map somewhere else. All right. Anyway, this is a general map of the Ukraine right here. 
again, this area and this area are what's uh, being held. I'll go back here to look at it from this standpoint. I got another map to show you that too. Um, right here. <clears throat> Some say Russia wants to connect these, but, oh yeah, one other thing, let me show you while we're in. Let's look at how the elections went in Ukraine when they were voting for president. This gives you, this will give you some idea of the division, I believe it's in this article somewhere, uh, the Ukraine, if I can find it. I may have seen that somewhere else. Give me a second. I thought it was here. It's real instructive as to how Ukraine is actually divided, divided if I can find it. It may not be in this article. Okay. It's looking somewhat less than absolutely promising here. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Maybe I still stop finding it here. A lot of stuff in this long article. Ukraine's quite a country. This is it right here. Bang. The blue areas all voted pro Russia. Just give you an idea. So you might figure that the areas that are blue are predominantly, or perhaps predominantly uh, ethnic Russian, definitely over here in eastern Ukraine. And if Russia were happy to take these, if, if these places all voted to go with Russia, then I'd say let them go. But Russia shouldn't be going all the way and taking it all. And I'm definitely a believer that people should have self-determination, that nobody should be owning or possessing another people, that it would, all this would be going under military, um, military adventurism though is a uh, guess, but that's what's happening. So, and this article uh, in Wall Street Journal says uh, Russian troop movements on Ukraine border test Biden administration. Uh, maybe they did in part to test the administration, but I think they had a, other bigger reasons to do it. Uh, Biden probably just gave them kind of an excuse by basically tempting them, said, We're not going to roll over for you anymore. And, you know, Mr. Putin's a tough guy. He's going, like, Oh, yeah, you like, you call me names, you cut sitting as a killer, I'm this, I'm that. So, yeah, watch this. So uh, a lot of vehicles, a lot of convoys, big convoys and trains are moving. Uh, according to my friend Lee Wilbarger, there's like 25 divisions already on the border and, and another 20 coming. Now, divisions are large. I don't know if he actually meant divisions or brigades or battalions, but uh, the, the, he showed in his video lots of armor moving. And we'll show you that in a minute. What I want to show you here is that uh, yeah, U.S. believes are concerned. They called it a train, likely a training exercise. But a training exercise is not going to be moving a lot of ammo, maybe a little bit, but not a lot. So we had our Joint Chiefs of Staff, Mark Miley, and also our uh, our Secretary uh, of uh, State, also talking with uh, officials in Russia and the Ukraine. And let's see here, I was going to show you something I'll find it down here. Here it is. On Monday, National Security Advisor Jake Sullivan spoke with the head of the Ukrainian presidential office, uh, Andriy Yermak, uh, probably murdering that name, and affirmed the U.S. ongoing support for Ukraine's sovereignty, ter territory integrity, and Euro-Atlantic aspirations in the face of continuing aggression. So um, again, he, he assured him of US ongoing support of Ukraine's sovereignty. There's no close quote in this, interesting. So it's bad, bad writing here, so I don't know where that ends. A firm US ongoing support of Ukraine's sovereignty, territory, integrity, and Euro-Atlantic aspirations in the face of continuing aggression. That's where a close quote should be. Interesting. Ongoing support for your country. How are we going? What is our ongoing support going to be? Are we just clap our hands. Is that the extent of it? My friends, I don't think we're going to do much. To be honest, in this case, you know, I don't think we're going in. 
I may be wrong. I think this will make the world a lot more unstable. I think it may lead to other conflicts, but I don't, and I, I want to talk about that in a minute, but I don't think we're going in. A buildup of troops on the Russian border of Ukraine has prompted fears of more violence than the breakaway region of Donbass, as you see here. Oh, maybe I closed. Uh, I thought I had Lee Warbarger's video up. I must have closed it. Uh, I had a video. I just wanted to show you. I have closed it here, ex probably accidentally. No, this is it. <laughs> I'm on it now. This is Lee Warbarger's video. Uh, so this is a, a YouTube channel of a friend of mine, uh, inventor Lee Wilbarger. I've had him on my channel a couple of times. I've been on his channel a couple of times, as many of you know. He did a video on this last night. I've already seen some articles on this and had thought about reporting it last night. But I did four videos yesterday, guys. Conflict and urged the world. And uh, after I got involved with, uh, I also had to take somebody to the emergency room last night. If I hadn't done that, I would have done, covered this last night. Old to pay attention. Right after that, that happened, this military convoy was seen moving into Crimea. That's the voice of Lee Wilbarger. Well, there's several convoys he shows in the course of this video. Would allow them, and they're going to come right through Depro here. Okay. And Depro 1 was who I worked with. That is the. Uh, well, they said they're going to come in here and take a dam and they're going to move, move on into Ukraine. So that's basically what he's saying. Yeah. Here's, uh, here's some of the tanks that are on uh, rail cars. Yeah, cool. Look so again, it's going to continue. So that was a day ago. So there's tanks, there's heavy artillery. Skip around here. This video is uh, almost two hours. So I'm not going to play all this video, but I'm just going to skip around and show you a couple of snippets out of it. <clears throat> bridge supplies bridge bridge so yeah they're going across a large waterway with that and the way you can tell that all right enough of that just give you the idea there's a lot of a lot of equipment being moved and that's the russian equipment you got to remember belarus is also involved in this so the funny thing is moscow's uh foreign minister sergey uh lavrov said Thursday, which is today, <laughs> any attempts to start a new military conflict in Ukraine's war-torn east could end up destroying Ukraine. I mean, it's like, you know, he's like saying, we're not doing this, but if somebody did it, look what could happen. So, wow, it's almost a, uh, ignoring that they're sending so many troops there, right? <laughs> Russian Foreign Minister, Ser Sergei uh, uh, Yavrov, <laughs> today. Says any attempts to start a new military conflict in Ukraine's war torn east could end up destroying Ukraine. So he's blaming it on the Ukraine itself, obviously. So here's another article in the New York Times about it. I'm not going to read all these articles. You can find them, for them yourself because I'm bringing you the skin here. It's taking me a while to say it all. It's because it's a big picture, but I'm still just trying to bring you the skin here. The skin is this Russia. And Belarus are moving troops, tanks, mobile artillery. Uh, uh, they're bringing uh, infantry fighting vehicles, kind of like our Bradley, uh, which is just mobile armored vehicles for, for infantry. They are bringing troops there, lots of them, they're putting them on the border. America's, oh, it's a training exercise. It's a training exercise. Yeah, with lots of heavy uh, vehicles moving munitions. Um, <clears throat> Lots of, lots of equipment and a whole lot more on its way. Um, so it's very ominous, very ominous. Um, 
they 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 are really getting in a position to be able to hit and hit hard and hit fast. Oh yeah, some of these trucks I'm told actually have mobile bridges on them. So if the other side blasts their bridges to inhibit movement, they won't even slow them down. I just throw these bridges across, and keep going. That's what an invasion force uses. That is what an invasion force uses. Mobile bridges, yeah. Uh, if they're not going in, they're so better thinking hard about it. <laughs> better thinking hard about it. So, uh, what does this mean to us, though? It's all there. It's happening. You know, there's that the conflict in and and Donbas, the Nitsk, whatever you want to call it, and uh, you know, Russia's climbing are just backing these people up for their safety. This is tough. There's nothing pretty about war. It's gonna be ugly any way it shapes out if, if there's a conflict here. It will be absolutely ugly. And it's a shame that Russia has got this itch to go in. But fundamentally, you know, we're offering verbal support to the Ukraine. I don't think it amounts to hill of beans. I don't think we're gonna do anything. Should we? I'm not even saying that. You know, we don't have a direct interest in the Ukraine directly. Uh, I've got Ukrainian friends now. I'm sure they would argue with me, but you know, I mean, in terms of economic interest, military interest, alliances, they're not in NATO. So it's not like we have a direct interest in that country in that regard, other than just human rights. You know, let's hope that this is not, uh, well, but we've done a lot of things ourselves that, uh, you know, violate a lot of things that would be human rights and with all the wars and things so there's nothing pretty about it, nothing pretty at all but what does it mean to you what i'm saying i don't think americans get into this one i don't see it we might give some verbal support maybe send a few things to ukraine to try to help them out but we're not getting involved in this one but russia's bold now russia may next go for lithuania Estonia, Latvia, the three Baltic states that Russia used to dominate, Russia occupied. The people of those nations hate Russia with a passion. And they've all joined NATO. Now we do have a treaty there. Can we even honor it when you look at the separation of those countries from uh, the rest of NATO countries that's kind of surrounded by Russia and the Baltic Sea? What's going to happen if Russia goes on those countries? Uh, what happens if while Russia's moving over here, especially they're going to the Baltic countries or Sweden or somewhere? Sweden not in, in NATO either. Norway is. What happens? What happens? Is Russia going to look over? Oh, you got a weak president and just start kicking things. And while they're at it, and we're getting distracted over here, will China say, "Oh, this is a good time to take Taiwan." And we get action over here. Uh, we'll, uh, I just talked about this a couple of days ago. Well, North Korea said, aha, now the United States is already distracted. Let's take South Korea. Does Russia, China, North Korea, maybe Iran, and some other countries have kind of a little secret drug deal between them? That we, hey, if we all launch out at once, we won't be able to handle it. Actually, I've got to cover that in a separate video because uh, there was a Chinese uh, individual talking about how to defeat the West. And that's kind of one of the things he talked about, just having too many fronts for America to deal with. That was one of his primary things he mentioned, having so many fronts that America couldn't deal with it. So apparently, this may already be in Chinese doctrine. So maybe they've already pre-coordinated. Yeah, let's all just all pounce at once. Then we'll see what they do. So I don't know. I hope that's not the case. Greg Allison did not say that this is going to happen and that's going to happen. I'm asking questions. And the reason I ask the questions is just so you to be can be aware of what could happen. Mostly so that you're aware to prepare. Maybe none of these things have come to pass. But you need to get yourself ready. You need to prepare because there's a whole lot of other things going on in this world today. There's a lot of potential nat natural catastrophes. Uh, there's the sun that may take out our power grid. There's EMP, 
cover these so much in my videos. Our power grid is at real risk of going down. If we get into it with these countries, that's one of the first things they target is bringing our power grid down. And it's, that is actually in the written doctrine of some of these countries, like Iran. They've already said they're dead if we get into it with us. Uh, Russia, China, it's in their doctrine. So, yeah, we got to be careful. We don't want to get tied up in a war with Russia right now. <laughs> or ever, for that fact. They've got some, they got some mean weapons. They have some really mean weapons. They could, they could run this nation and the whole world. Why does a pygmy in Africa have to suffer? Because we get into it with another country, you know, the, the different, why? Because two countries over here get in a war, should everybody else in the world suffer? Why? Well, that's kind of what we're talking about here. Everybody's gonna suffer. Even with it, between India and Pakistan, uh, some say that if any of Pakistan got into it, there'd be so much uh, dust thrown above the troposphere, so it, into the stratosphere, it wouldn't rain out, that, uh, that we would get uh, very cold for seven to 10 years, crop failures, and a billion people would starve. Outside, outside of Pakistan and uh, India. So these are the kind of things we've got to consider. Uh, this is not trivial when we're looking at these kind of things. We don't need to get into these kind of situations if we can avoid it. But Russia may be moving. They may be about to pounce. And maybe they're about to pounce just simply because we don't look strong. That is one advantage of looking strong. Peace through strength. Don't mean you got to use the strength. But you, ever, you ever noticed how the big guys... You know, a lot of times the ones that are at least, you know, more jovial, the big tough looking guys, a lot of times are just really jovial and they eat like big teddy bears. It's because they don't worry. <laughs> Nobody's going to bother them. They're not worried about anything. Why should they worry? Nobody's going to jump on them. <laughs> I can afford to be like that. Another thing, most playful animals in the animal kingdom are the predators. So. Just because I'm playful don't mean I'm easy. <laughs> All right, my friends. So, you know, I got a crystal ball here. You know, it's not telling me Jack Diddle is so morning, 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 real Roger. Yeah, so it's, um, we're in tough times. All I can say is get ready, be prepared. I'm not saying exactly what's going to happen, but be prepared. Don't be scared. Be prepared. That's what you need to do. Go to prepwithgreg.com. Help yourself out there. Start growing a garden. Uh, go to uh, True Leaf Markets. Use my links. Go to True Leaf Markets uh, for, for seeds. And uh, I'll be selling worms hopefully in a few weeks. So, my friends, just get ready. Be prepared. Sorry I'm just droning on with this, but um, this is serious. This is really, really, really serious. And I'm saying I don't think we're getting involved. But it could, this could be like dominoes falling. The dominoes could start falling. See, friends, here's the thing. Right now, I'm going to leave one final thought here. Right now, the world is kind of set up like the world was before World War I. We've got a lot of tension. A lot of things have built up. And it's just like all this spring tension is about to break loose if we're not careful. We could find ourselves in all kind of conflagration. And remember, hey, how did, all, how did, the, how did we get into it in WW1? Some Art Duke got it, right? Art Duke Ferdinand. Yeah. So people would have thought that would have led to the kind of misery that, 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 that ensued from that. Wow. All my friends, be careful. Don't be scared. Be prepared. And thank you for watching.